Oh, uh, welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over how to pack and ship your saxophone to your repair person, wherever they may be, so you can maximize the protection and make sure that your instrument can be fully insured in case something bad happens in transit. We do have a couple of winners from last week. Uh, the hashtag from the last week was in the comments below. And the winner of our 10% off class is Roger Farrell. Roger, congratulations, sir. Send me an email to richrch at musicmedic.com. <laughs> no question mark at the end of that email address, though, by the way. Uh, we, I will get you your prize. Now, the prize is going to be 10% off tuition for the last course that we have of the year. It is our saxophone, advanced saxophone course on September 19th through 22nd. We had our engraving class sell out this past week, so sorry for you guys. Sorry, 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 uh, for sorry. You, yeah, our neighbors to the north. Uh, if you guys were trying to get that one, but we do have our advanced saxophone course available. So if you are a professional technician and you have been working on instruments all summer, you've been doing instrument uh, student instruments, you've been doing rentals, you can come down take a few days off, uh, learn some advanced saxophone techniques to bring back to the shop and earn more profits as you enter the overhaul season as we head into winter. Uh, so Roger, send me an email. And for those of you for this week who want to get in on that awesome prize, make sure you take ship your sacks, put that in the comments below. Uh, now, the other thing that I will say is if you want to get in on these prizes, so like I think 10% off tuition for this course. It's like a couple hundred dollars prize. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the videos as well because we're doing these giveaways and you can be, you know, there's not that many people who watch these videos. Right. You know, it's not like there's millions of people watching them. And so if you keep putting that hashtag in there, uh, you will eventually you're going to win. And do all of, these three things. Some of these prizes are going to be pretty and darn good. You will win. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, Ryan, let's get into it. We are talking about how we ship instruments, and we have a lot of inter international customers who ship instruments to us. So we have a video. Actually, I'm going to put it in the description below, uh, what we recommend as far as specs for boxes and such. But let's go over the procedure for how to ship an instrument yeah. to... Pack and ship. Pack and ship. Ship your sacks. Hashtag ship your sacks. Like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell. All that fun stuff. So you'll notice we have our 112 scale. Very nice. One twelfth for you model train and, and uh, airplane Absolutely. enthusiasts. There Rocket some... builders. Yeah. Okay. Um, or people that just like tiny things. This is one right here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to use this as an example. I'm going to pack and ship our one twelfth scale saxophone. The very first thing I should say is do not ship your saxophone in the case. Do not ship your saxophone in the case. And one more time, just in case, up, up close to the up close, do not ship your saxophone. In its case, okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the saxophone is the saxophone case is not designed uh, to be shipped in. Okay, right. even if you have a super expensive case, even if your case is covered with a, a, a plethora of stickers. Yes. Okay, a plethora of stickers. Mm -hmm. um, it still will not help. Okay, you need to not ship your case with your saxophone. Okay, um, and we're going to show you here kind of the steps and, and everything's going to be. 112th scale. Um, okay. So we have our 112th scale saxophone. The very first thing, um, as I will say, is unfortunately our 112th scale saxophone does not have a removable neck, mm. uh, but for your saxophone alto, tenor, baritone, um, you're obviously going to take the neck off for this. I'm going to go ahead and take the mouthpiece off. We're going to pretend that's the neck. And we're actually going to pack that separately. So if imagine, if you will, that this is just the saxophone body. Okay. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is, here's our 112th scale packing pe or uh, bubble wrap. Uh, for non 112 scale, it's going to look like this. It is the one inch oh. bubble wrap, okay? And if you can resist the urge, oh, to pop those. There it is. Oh. If you can. Um, so that this is, is what you're is going fine. to use to actually wrap your saxophone in, whether it's an alto, tenor, baritone, soprano, sopranino, bass. Yes. Okay, all of this. This is the one inch, uh, but for demonstration 112 purposes, this is what we're going to use. Um, so a couple areas on saxophone we want to watch out for is the bow tends to be an area that can take some damage. The bell rim and even the receiver here, okay? So sometimes what I'll do is when I'm wrapping this up in bubble wrap, I will just fold the bottom a few times and then place the bow there. So I have a couple layers of bubble wrap, okay? Then I'm just going to start to wrap like so. 
and like so. Sometimes what I will do is I will add a little strip around the bell rim because again, that is an area that can be damaged and crushed. Same thing with the receiver. And then I'm just going to wrap this up. And now Ryan, how many times are you wrapping the instrument? You want at least three. Three layers of bubble wrap surrounding. More is better, obviously. Okay, extra protection. Mm -hmm. um, so at least three layers of bubble wrap, and then you're going to use whatever packing tape. Again, this is not to scale, not to 1 12 scale. This is full scale. Um, you're going to take that up. You're going to do the same thing with the neck. You're going to do a couple layers of bubble wrap, and then usually what you'll do is you'll just kind of tape them together like so. Okay. Then you're going to take a box that is slightly bigger. Okay, you do want to have some room, and you can see this is about a good relationship size. You want a little bit of space all the way around, and this is going to be our inner box. Okay. And typically with UPS or different carriers, you want to check the 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 amount of peanuts uh, that's going to be around the object. So, for example, a lot of times it's six to nine inches. Uh, for say antiques, which a lot of vintage saxophones are categorized as. Absolutely. So make sure that you double check the fine print with your shipping carrier. Um, if you don't want to do that because it's kind of hard, uh, just take it to say a shipping center like a UPS store and they have to know what they're doing and they have to sign for that and so you're kind of guaranteed. Yeah, we, we've had a few times where customers have you know, not done this themselves, bought it to the UPS you know, shipping facility, um, they've packed it up and everything's been good to go. Yeah. Um, so you'll notice I have everything kind of centered in there. I have our 112 scale packing peanuts, which cool. stayed late. I shrunk all these down in the microwave. Um, not really. But so as you can see here, so there's a layer of, of bubble, uh, sorry, packing peanuts in the bottom. And then I'm just going to fill the rest of this box with packing peanuts. And I'm trying not to spill. But you may spill some. It's I may. All right. It's okay. Now, it's uh, part of life. The other thing is you're, in the video that I have in the link below, it does have the sizes of the boxes. So for say an alto saxophone like this one, it's gonna be a 28 by 16 by 10 inch box on the outside and then a 26 by 13 by eight inch on the inside. So I know this isn't exactly the same. Well, we're working 112 scale. 112 scale, gotcha. so do, do the math folks. I mean, what do you uh, want? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, make sure, so I do have the, and if you have a tenor or you're shipping a baritone saxophone, we also have those dimensions in that video as well. So there we are, our inner box filled with packing peanuts. I tend to fill this a little over. That way, when you close it, everything's packed in there nice and tight. I'm going to use my packing tape to seal everything up. So there we are, everything's taped up. You can do a couple layers, but again, realize that you're not putting a shipping label to this and shipping this off. This is going to be our inner box. Okay. Okay. We're going to take another box that is, again, Slightly bigger, and you can see kind of the size difference. Again, everything's 1 12th scale. Maybe 1 13th, I don't know. I didn't major in math. But what we're going to do is we're going to put that smaller box inside a larger box, and we're going to fill this with packing peanuts. You notice I have packing peanuts on the bottom. I kind of wedge it in there, make a little nest of packing peanuts, and then I'm going to fill the rest of this, making sure that I have a nice layer all the way around the sides, the bottom, and the top as well. Get all my packing peanuts in there. Get everything nice and tight. And then I'm going to tape up the outer box. Like so. I'll usually do a few this way. You're doing cross? Oh, yeah. okay. Double it up. So there we go. Perfect. Usually a couple layers this way. And then I will also add tape to the corners, not just the top, but the bottom as well. So I'll do a couple layers here and then I'll tape the corners. And then there you go. You can see everything's nice. If you have plenty of packing peanuts, it should be nice and secure. Um, and then the only thing we're missing really here is our 112 scale packing label, which I would put right here. And then I would put a couple layers of packing tape over that to protect it and cover it just in case the box got wet. And let's just talk about insurance quickly because that's going to be very important. Um, as I said before, make sure you look up the fine print on your shipping carrier to see what the dimensions are for uh, an antique. Uh, so like a vintage saxophone might be classified as antique. So make sure you have the amount of packing peanuts that need to surround that uh, because if you do have some sort of damage, the uh, you know, for example, UPS is going to ask for a picture of the inside box mm -hmm. and they're going to take a look at the peanuts and they can deny your claim if you don't have enough. So make sure you put that in there. Uh, the other thing is for 
uh, insurance value, probably a good ballpark value is around $3,000. Um, you could do the replacement value or $3,000, you know, something that's going to cover the cost of, say, a, a quote unquote total loss uh, so that your repair person can bring it back to life for you. Um, the other thing is for international shipments. So we get a lot of customers from Europe shipping over to us for uh, repairs. You want to check the amount for casual entry. Uh, so that's basically the amount that you can, uh, the, the, the value of, uh, you know, a shipment uh, for it to go from door to door. So if, uh, you know, typically it's around $10,000 uh, from outside the U.S. coming in. So we try to say to folks, you know, if they have a $10,000 instrument, you know, why don't we, you know, say nine five so that we don't have to get a customs broker. If you have an expensive instrument, you may have to get a customs broker, and that involves extra paperwork, and it also means uh, you have to go to some sort of uh, customs warehouse to pick up your instrument. Usually it's at an airport, um, so that's going to kind of delay your package, and it's going to be an extra bunch of logistics and costs. So if you can, uh, make sure that you're looking up the customs value uh, and double check the amount for casual entry, and it varies from country to country, but it's easy to look up. Uh, the other thing to remember about the customs value is the customs value is the same as the insurance value when you are shipping internationally. So any country that has that, or if they have a lot of duties, uh, duties, uh, if they have a lot of charges for customs, uh, you know, you. You have to remember that whatever you so, for example, uh, some of our customers will say, "Well, you know, I, the instrument's worth five thousand, but just say it's it's actually five hundred dollars." Well, if this instrument gets damaged in shipping, customs and insurance is only got, insurance is only going to pay the five hundred dollar value that you put on for customs. So you kind of have to, you know, figure out the sweet spot for where you want to put the value at. Whether say if it's a five thousand dollar instrument, maybe you put the value at twenty five hundred, so that or 3000 or whatever, so that in case there is damage, you're covered uh, in terms of insurance costs. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, in terms of dropping it off uh, in the United States, uh, we do a lot of UPS work. So, um, you know, we often we'll drop off with a UPS driver, uh, a drop center, a distribution center is also good. So say, you know, distribution centers are often open 24 hours. We have one here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and all we have to do is get the package in and just give it to someone in a brown yeah, shirt. Yeah, as long as they work there. Yep, just give it That's to them. Right. They'll take care of the rest. Distribution centers are great to drop off. So say packages. if you're a college student, you don't understand, you know, how things work and you've got your instrument and it's after six o'clock and your repairman's like, hey, I need it by Thursday to get it back to you for your recital, whatever. You can always find the distribution center, drive it over there and give it to any of them. And I think the UPS store, having a UPS store person package your instrument for you, even if you're just watching them, That's right. is a very good idea just because in terms of insurance stuff, they know their shipping rules. Uh, you can also just look up shipping rules in FedEx, UPS, DHL, and eventually you can dig through and see what the actual requirements are. Uh, Ryan, I think. Yeah, I think everything's good to go. I think I'm ready to ship this out. <laughs> you know, we're going to insure this for, you know, probably tens of thousands since, you know, right. it's the world's only Sopranino et. <laughs> one twelve scale saxophone, fully playable. I'm not going to play it for you, but it is. That's right, you fully playable. Make sure you take ship your sax. Put it in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. This video, you can share it around. I will also have a link in the comment uh, in the description below to the actual dimensions of the boxes that you will need. That uh, those are very handy to have. We'll be back next week. Uh, we're going to go over some advanced saxophone stuff with Ryan. We're going to be talking about uh, reaming key ends for key fitting, and we're going to be getting ready for our advanced saxophone repair course at the yeah. end of September. Fun stuff. That's right. That's going to do it for now. So uh, until next time, happy repairing. Insured, we're fine. That's good. <laughs>